Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. This is part of our Fast Start series. This is actually exciting. We are going to go through example number one over the course of this demo. If you have any questions about getting set up, we do have a separate video on this, so please go ahead and watch that. We are going to assume at this point that you have PIP installed and you have LLMware running on your system. And what we're going to do in the course of this example is we're going to go through example one which is how do you set up a library to parse, text, chunk, and index to really start to convert a pile of files into an AI-ready knowledge base. This is the first step in any type of retrieval augmented generation workflow. To remind you, all of these examples are available in the fast start section in the LLMware repository. We are going to go through this one, example number one. And just so it doesn't hurt anybody's eyes, if you're looking at sort of the white background, I am going to flip over in just a second. So I'll walk through most of the code in an IDE environment. I'm just going to explain to you what's in the code. Then we're going to quickly run the sample. And then I'm going to walk you through some of the other things that you can do once you've gone through it the first time. So we will flip over as promised. What I'm looking at here is just the execution configuration. We'll go and we'll look at, at the main method that we're going to be calling in just a second. But in terms of configuration, a little bit of background. When you pip install LLMware, one of the functions and classes that's provided is, is a setup function. And that setup function actually will pull down a set of sample documents. We find this is extremely helpful when you want to get started quickly and when you want to verify that the system is installed, that the code is working without having to go in and chase down your own documents to get started. But these are just samples. They do come out of the box. And again, a big part of the example that we want to show you is use this to do your hello world, do the verification that the system is working but then ultimately swap these out and move on and start using some of your own documents. So what is included? Um, there's a whole set of folders. We are going to see the list of them here. We're going to pick one of them to run through in this example, the agreements one. As you can see, it's about 15 contract documents. We'll click through them really quickly. The UN resolutions 500 is 500 documents. The agreements large is around 80 legal documents. FinDocs are some financial uh, annual reports and earning statements. The invoices is around 40 documents. It's a nice working set to get started with this. So that's the first thing, just to give you that grounding, the sample documents that are, we're just gonna be pulling down as part of the example script. The second key thing is this line. We are going to use SQLite uh, for the purpose of this example in the fast start. It is an embedded database, doesn't require any setup, any install. And so we're gonna use SQLite for the purpose of this example. One thing we certainly would encourage you to do as you look at larger applications or you look at scaling this is think about Mongo or Postgres, two other uh, collection databases that we use as alternatives to underpin all the text in your library. Then what we're gonna do, because I wanted to just illustrate this so you can see in parsing what's actually happening. This is the first step of the code. We're just gonna set a debug mode to two. You don't usually have to do this. Uh, we're just gonna do it for the purpose of this example, just to give you a really nice view as it's stepping through document by document. You'll see that output then on the screen. Then all we have to do is we have to pick a name for our library. Feel free to pick anything that you want. And then we're gonna go ahead and run the main script. So now let's go and let's look at the main script and what we're actually gonna be doing. As I mentioned, we're passing in these two parameters, library name and the sample folder that we want to look at. The first thing that you need to do to create a new library is you're gonna instantiate you know, the library class. You're gonna create new library is the method with the library name. This creates and sets up both table in a database, as well as setting up whole set of supporting file repositories as well, where all the work and all the information around this library is ultimately going to be stored. But there's nothing in it yet. At that point, your library is registered, but it's completely empty. So we're gonna fill it up. As I mentioned, we provide these sample documents with the setup command and load sample files. This is gonna cache these files locally. I'm in the LLMware data path. Typically that will be at you know, users, who whatever your role or name is, and then LLMware data, and then inside LLMware data, you're gonna find that path. Just so you can see where it is and you can find it in the future, we're gonna print that out right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to the specific sample folder that you've selected. We're gonna look at that agreements folder, and then we're gonna start parsing. Now parsing is where a lot of the magic happens. And what we've tried to do in LLMware is make it as absolutely simple as possible. 
So the way that we add files to a library is actually, it does the parsing, it does the text chunking, and then it indexes all of it in the SQLite database in this case. What we're gonna do, we're gonna point at a file path. It's gonna go through and based on the extension of the file, whether it's PDF, PowerPoint, Word doc, Excel, CSV, Markdown document, text file, JSON file, WAV file, a zip, JPEG, or PNG, it's gonna route it to the appropriate document-specific parser. That parser is gonna go extract all the information, store it in text chunks in the database. All of that's gonna happen you know, behind the scenes and it's gonna happen really, really fast. So in this case, the 15 agreements are all PDFs. They're about 15 pages each. You're gonna see, we're gonna click through it in, in just a few seconds. Then once we're done, once add files has parsed all of the, the documents, uh, we're just gonna show a quick readout. First, we're gonna look at the output from the parsing process. Then we're gonna check out our library card. Library card is just a very simple abstraction. Every library has a library card. The library card has the key metadata, key counting data, key information about the library. So at any point to get information about your library, you can just call the get library card method. And we're gonna print that out just so you can see what that ultimately provides for you. What we're then gonna do is we're just gonna look at where the file path is so you can see where things are being stored on your file system, any other file-based assets within that library. And at that point, we've created our knowledge base. And if you think about it, it, it really comes down to just a couple of lines. Just to scroll back up, you create the library, you pick a folder path, and that folder path has to have your raw files. It can be any mix and match set of files. And this one line is really where all the magic happens. This does all the core work then of parsing and breaking down those documents and indexing it then in SQLite. So once you've created your library, well, what do you do with it? Well, the real reason you create a library is it's organizing all that information in ways then that are easy to consume and easy to, to expose to an LLM in some form of a retrieval augmented generation workflow. It also enables you to start running queries against your documents in a really simple way. So we had a bunch of contracts. We're gonna ask just a very, very simple text query. The text query is base salary. What it's gonna do then is it's gonna go out and it's gonna query within SQLite. It's gonna run a text query and it's gonna look at every single chunk of text to find the chunks of text that have base salary in it and to return those to us. The way that we actually run that query is we instantiate a query object. We pass that query object the library and then the methods are just different modes of queries that we can run against it. Here we're gonna use the simplest query that's available which is the text query. We're gonna pass it our query of base salary. We're gonna get a bunch of results. And then we're just gonna go and we're gonna loop through and print out those results. So you can start seeing the kinds of metadata and attributes that go with each of these individual text blocks that we've created through the parsing and the library creation process. So I hope that that's really clear. Let's go ahead, let's run the demo. Demo is gonna run really, really fast but then we'll go, we'll spend a little bit of time looking at the output of it and then come back and look at the code and, and talk about kind of the next steps of what to do with it. So we're gonna go ahead and run and we're done. So um, as I said, it, it flew by, but let me quickly walk you through what happened, what we just saw. So we created our library, we pulled in the sample files and here you can see, um, as I said, this is where those sample files are stored. It's useful just for you to know, so you can check and confirm that it is on a you know, local path and it's where you want it to be. We're then gonna pull from a specific folder in those sample files, which is the agreements folder. And then as I said, the reason that we set the debug mode to two is it actually then the parser as it's parsing, it actually prints to the screen each file as it's processing it. So it parsed and processed these 15 agreements. It pulled those files. It does a, a full binary digital parse, you know, implementing the, the PDF specification. And then you can see the summary data of what happened. We parsed 15 documents. We created 1,272 blocks, individual chunks of text across 204 pages. And all that happened in 2.34 seconds. It happened really, really fast. So one of the things that LLMware has is we have C-based parsers that are compiled shared libraries that come as part of the LLMware uh, pip install package. So those parsers are really, really fast. And you can see with 15 documents, it's a couple of seconds. But even then, as you start parsing, 
with dozens of documents, hundreds of documents, you're able to move through them really, really fast and create that you know, text chunking and create all the organization in a, a persistent data store. So then as we keep looking through this, as I said, the parsing output just gives you a nice little dictionary of what it did. It did reject one file. For those who use Mac, it's one of these annoying Mac things. It sometimes puts this DS store. It can be hard sometimes to get rid of them. So it identified that and rejected it. You can see then when we look at the library card, this is the information that it provides about the library. You can see that we have not yet created an embedding. Stay tuned. That's what we're going to do in the second example. But then what you also see is all the counting data of the documents, the blocks, the images, the pages, the tables um, that we were able to extract and add to the library. You can now then see the file path. This is a good path for you to check out locally. This is where all the assets associated with that library are going to be stored. The most useful and most interesting can be things like images. So if you do feed in some documents that happen to have a lot of images, those images are gonna be extracted and they're gonna be saved within this folder path. And then finally, the, the core reason to do all of this is to be able to run a query. So think about it. We started with 15 PDF documents that were sitting in a folder. We broke it down into 1,272 blocks. We extracted all of the text information and we put it in a SQLite database. We then run a text search against that. And these are the top 10 results that we found from that base salary. And I'll just quickly scroll this so that you can spend a little time and you can start to get oriented to it. The most important field is the text field. And the text field actually is the chunk of text that it found. And good thing, it does have the word base salary in all of that. So the text search was successful. But beyond the text field, it has a whole bunch of useful attributes. So it shows you here, we indexed each document and assigned it a document number. Each text block was assigned a number. The reason these are the same and the reason the page numbers are the same is if you think about it, we added 15 documents. So it found in effect the same template language on base salary in about the same place in every single one of those documents. It tells us the content type. So this could be a table, it could be an image. If it was able to extract author metadata, it extracts it here. It shows you the file source, the timestamp of when it was added to the collection. For each text block, wherever possible, the actual coordinates on the PDF page are extracted. So you have the relationships then captured of where it was on that page. You can see some information then that gets created through the course of the search process. And then we also provide the matches. So where that text search was performed, the actual character level match in that text string. So the way to read this is that on the 13th character of the text, is where the word base starts. This is really, really useful if you wanna build anything around you know, highlighting of keywords, if you wanna run some more advanced analytics on it, it's also a really helpful way to just to confirm that the search was successful and to find where it was potentially in a you know, paragraph level text chunk. And then you see some additional metadata just about the library and about the account. So hopefully this gives you a pretty good grounding I wanna come back just quickly to the code and to where we started. What I'd really encourage everybody to do, experiment with some of these other sample documents. They're gonna have different characteristics. They're different types of questions that you can ask to them. And hopefully you see how easy it is to swap out these sample documents and just start to point this at a folder path where you have some of your own documents. We've used SQLite. When you have Mongo installed or Postgres installed and all you wanna do is flip over to them, it's simply a matter of changing the name here to Mongo or to Postgres. You can create multiple libraries. You could keep adding to that library. You know, that's really up to you. And then where you should really have some fun is you know, experimenting with these different queries, getting comfortable with some of the attributes that are provided and starting to experiment with some of your own documents. So that brings us to an end of this tutorial. This is the end of example one. Everything here is self-contained, so copy, paste, run, experiment. As I mentioned you know, at the very beginning of the video, 
any questions, any issues, please come to our Discord community. It's really open. Welcome developers of all levels of experience. And you've got a lot of really senior people with a lot of experience doing this who are available and at your disposal to help you if you run into any issues. So with that, happy coding. Have a great time working through this. Have a wonderful day. And stay tuned and tune in for video number two. Thanks, everybody.